Melissa Rochelle here with us. Melissa, why don't you introduce yourself? Hi guys, um, so I'm a stand-up comedian and I've done stuff in real estate and in blockchain education. So I have a weird resume that's kind of all over the place. <laughs> Good, what have you got for us today? Uh, I did a little bit of uh, a Bitcoin-esque set. And uh, so yeah, let's see how this goes. It's always fun doing virtual shows where you get to watch your eyebrows the whole time. But, uh, <laughs> It's, a, <laughs> it's the best medium we got right now during this crazy year we're living through. So Absolutely. I'm happy to be here with you guys. And uh, I, uh, I love the idea. Great. Cool. All right. Hit us with it. All right, guys. Um, Bitcoin's got talent. I love it. <laughs> you guys are making a parody TV show just so nerds can get laid. I mean, <laughs> That's, that's creative. <laughs> I'm kidding. Obviously, this is a beautiful platform to try and showcase new projects being built on BSV. But if some stressed out programmers, you know, get their hose drained and they can focus better, hey, two birds, one stone, you know? <laughs> PETA might try and cancel me for that on Twitter. Uh, I don't throw things at birds, don't worry. Uh, at least we have Twitch, right? I can't get kicked off of there and canceled. It's on a blockchain. Um, Teenagers, don't put stupid stuff on there. It's on a blank chain. <laughs> People don't understand how it works. Um, but I'm, I'm really excited for the show to get popular. You know, you guys are making programming sexy for like the first time ever in history. Congrats. You know, it's very needed. I have a lot of friends that are programmers and I'm like, oh, you guys are brilliant, but will you ever reproduce? I just need to help you figure out how. <laughs> And, um, you know, we, we like to daydream about like Aragon, not Gandalf, you know? And I feel like Gandalf was kind of the core developer on that journey. <laughs> he had a lot of stress. He probably could have appreciated having an Arwen around. And um, I'm a little surprised more women don't like programmers, you know, like a man with a plan. We're all about that. <laughs> Most of the ones I've met, very shy right so like the likelihood of him chatting up some other girl and cheating on you pretty low <laughs> especially if he gets like tunnel vision when he's working and he forgets to eat he needs you not gonna cheat not gonna cheat at all <laughs> might be codependence but you definitely got relationship security right there <laughs> i feel like women too kind of forget like how powerful feeding others is you know like breasts are kind of like our own ASIC mining equipment, <laughs> but for milk. <laughs> like, very specific function. <laughs> and their proof of work keeps babies alive. How beautiful. <laughs> I thought River might like that one. <laughs> but I, uh, I feel like more women are gonna catch on to where like the good dudes in society are because there's a lot of them in this community. You know, they're trying to like rebuild rebuild this, this very broken, very corrupt monetary system that we have. Um, I used to date a banker before I got into Bitcoin. I know, gross. And uh, <laughs> it, it gave me legitimate that. firsthand experience on why we need Bitcoin, for sure. <laughs> I was excited ever. I was like, okay, he's not a comedian. Like he can, he can buy dinner. This is great. And then I realized, oh yeah, he can buy dinner because he's silently robbing everyone with inflation. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe I should break up this guy. <laughs> but dating is like, it's pretty hard when you're focused on Bitcoin, right? Like there's been a couple times where I thought my guy was like chatting up some other lady only to realize, oh no, he's just checking coin market cap for the 10th time today. <laughs> cool. If he's looking at elliptic curves instead of people curves, I can deal with that. I can deal with that. <laughs> that good. I feel like uh, I feel like a lot of women don't like realize the power that we have in mate selection. You know, like we should be marrying the guys that are trying to take power away from big tech. You know, those are the That's guys that saying. deserve sex, not the guys that are just like on Tinder and don't care what your name is. And if you're more into the mysterious type, find a guy in Monero. <laughs> I mean, good luck figuring out who he actually is, what he looks like. 
But if you find him, <laughs> all they talk about is ring signatures. <laughs> you had me at ring. <laughs> I do get like why those dudes are so private though. Digital gold diggers, right? <laughs> Unfortunately, coming to a conference near you whenever Bitcoin hits an all-time high, uh, guys, watch out. <laughs> she might be a digital gold digger if she cares about zeros, but only the ones in your wallet balance, not about hash power. She might be a digital gold digger if um, the number of years in between your age is equivalent to a BTC transaction fee in 2017. <laughs> very niche, but very big, important red flag, guys. <laughs> and uh, she might be a digital gold digger if she can't tell you the difference between proof of work and proof of stake, but she still expects you to buy her stake. <laughs> thank you so much for having me guys i love the brilliant minds in this community and it makes me feel like the smartest jester to be able to try and make <laughs> btc transaction fee jokes <laughs> for somebody that might get it that was well awesome <laughs> wow oh. uh, I, I don't think i've ever heard a joke about Monero that <laughs> it just it landed I mean that was that was uh that was great <laughs> that was brilliant how, how, is this a specialty of yours or is this a one-time thing a, a a bit about uh about Bitcoin no I mean I I'm in it so I get I get the stuff and I was doing comedy before it um and I did a lot of jokes about like being single and things like that. I'm, I'm not anymore. So now I do jokes about relationships, but yeah, I kind of just like merge those. Cause I'm like, that is how it kind of makes sense to me. So it might make sense to some other weirdos that way. And uh, yeah, I'm, I'm totally down to do more jokes about Bitcoin and things like that. If I have an audience that gets it, I've tried doing them at open mics in like the city of Chicago and I've just gotten kind of like <laughs> free kids. <laughs> yeah, blank stairs, the mouth open and I'm like, all right. So before, you know, 2020 hit, I was contacting different um, crypto meetups and I was like, hey, can I come do stand up for you guys? And I had a lot of people that were interested and I was planning on doing that. So I guess Good I idea. can do it virtually still, but it obviously is a, is a very different vibe than in person when you like really get the energy going back and forth. Yeah. And you really can do like a whole hour with people and you really get to like know each other. Obviously, a whole hour on Bitcoin jokes would be a little <laughs> bit of a stretch for me. <laughs> well, you, I mean, I don't know. You you could do it while you're waiting for your BTC to, to confirm, you know? <laughs> but, well, I'm converting ETH yeah. to gas. Yeah, for sure. I yeah. got time. <laughs> well, well, look, uh, I, it is incredibly difficult to do something like a comedy bit virtually over zoom where you don't have that audience or anything like incredibly difficult and can be really yeah. awkward uh you said you wanted to do more of this i'll give you a chance to do more of it on the second <laughs> round because i'm a big yes thank you i am an absolute yes i loved that i think that we need so much more of this in the in in the in the space in the atmosphere and in 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 where we all are you know we are such a little niche market bitcoin is a really really niche market and so if we can have those kind of inside personal jokes going around it's it's it just makes it all the more fun i loved it please come back please thank you <laughs> go ahead jack Oh, Josh wants to be yeah. the last vote. <laughs> Josh, you go ahead first. You just you go first. <laughs> Look, some game theory all right. at work here. Melissa, I, I I think you you really tried hard, uh, and it was really it was really a, a good. It, you did well for the circumstance. I'll give you that. But I was really disappointed. I didn't I, I didn't catch a single oh, joke about on. really big blocks, and I, I didn't hear any kind of uh, gas fee jokes uh, tossed in there. So. You know, I, I, I think you really missed your opportunity to, um, to, to, to jump on that. And, and I'm, I'm a little disappointed. I, I'm going to have to say. <laughs> all right. Fair enough, dad. Fair enough. And then it all comes down to Jack because you have to get 51%, you know, to, to, to make it to the next round. Uh, what if I just civil attack all of you? <laughs> Uh, Josh, man, this is pre-scripted. Josh was like going to be harsh. So you're just getting the pre-scripted version of Josh. I loved it. Uh, I got to say, when you watch this on the real America's Got Talent and things like that, 
the jokes tend to be on the roasting of the judges. So I was very glad that you avoided that this time. I think when you come back on, you're going to be roasting me and, and, and River and Isaac. <laughs> so uh, scared about that, but I think you deserve to move on. I think you're really funny. Um, and honestly, kudos to your Bitcoin uh, knowledge because some of those jokes I didn't get because probably I don't understand the <laughs> industry as much as you do. So that's a yes for me. Thank well you. done. Thank you, Melissa. Thank you so much for coming on. I love you guys. We'll see you next time. All right. Thanks, Melissa.